Hey guys, welcome to a new video in this C++ tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about the standard template library in C++, and we're going to talk about like what it is and how we can use the standard template library in C++ code. So first of all, here let's talk about and get an, an, a quick overview over what the standard template library is in C++ and like how it works. So it is it's a library for the C++ programming language which we can use and and we can use the building functions in the standard template library when we're uh, writing our C++ code. And the library pr provides like four main components uh, in it where there's algorithms and there's some different kind of containers uh, that we can store data in and then do some different kind of methods and operations on those containers. And those functions and methods like it's also uh, already built into the standard template library so we can just use all of these like different kind of components and then inside of these components there's also some different kind of methods that we can call and do some different kind of stuff so you can do a lot of different kind of stuff with with only like the standard template library uh, in C++ and especially like more uh, standard and more used methods and also like um, algorithms so it also uses functions and some iterators um, where we can like iterate through our containers and do some different kind of stuff with iterators to like find the maximum element in a container and a lot of different kind of stuff which we're going to see an example on later in code. So the library here uses templates which gives good results and is very efficient because when we're using um, templates in, the, in C++ here and in the way it's implemented then the template approach here it provides a uh, compile time polymorphism um, we talked about polymorphism when we, uh, when we talked about object-oriented programming and stuff like that in one of the previous videos. So this template approach here is it's better uh, and more efficient than traditional uh, runtime polymorphism because now we have it at compile time instead of like the traditional one where we had it at runtime. So our programs will be more, uh, better and also more um, efficient when we're using the standard template library. So modern C++ compilers are also like optimized for the STL library so it's really good uh, thing to use the standard template library and, and look up if there's some different kind of methods or like functions uh, and also like algorithms that is already built in instead of uh, writing your own uh, functions because now they are already debugged and there's um, it is like the most efficient implementation of that algorithm or function because it has been debugged uh, so many times and also like it's optimized for the C++ compilers so the most optimal um, one is to use uh, the function from the standard template library instead of writing them yourself and it also save you a lot of time and it just makes your code and program better and also more efficient. So especially if we're uh, talking about algorithms and data structures, the C++ uh, standard library is really good. And I also have a video on algorithm and data structures and so if you're interested in that, you can go check that out and see like how we can, uh, what data structures are and how we can create our own data structures. And also we're going over some different kind of algorithms with sorting and how they work. So these are just in the standard template library. It is just implementation of the algorithm and data structures. But in that tutorial, I'm talking about like how they work and how we can implement them in, uh, by ourselves, and also like uh, how we can use the different kind of methods on the def uh, different kind of data structures and also how to use the algorithms. So the STL contains uh, the most important and used data structures there is like stacks, queues, uh, vectors, and also like a lot of other different kind of uh, data structures and maps. Um, so it's also possible uh, to create your own data structure as I talk about in the data structure tutorial as well. And some alg algorithms is also in the standard template library, like for example, sorting, if we want to sort a, an array or vector in an ascending or descending um, way, and we can also like define our own way it should sort that list by using some lam lambda functions and stuff like that. We can also shuffle a vector or like find the minimum or maximum element in a container. So C++ is actually like the most used programming language for competitive programming because it is really fast and it's really efficient and we can like write really good and also like kind of low level code. And there's a lot of built-in functions in, in STL that we can use in competitive programming. And also like we can define the macros if we want to uh, write our, our program or like our application as fast as possible, which we, we want to do in competitive programming. And it is also like just easy to use because we can define our own macros and we have the built-in functions in the standard template library and they're just really fast and efficient so that's why like most of the computer programmers are using the C++ um, as the primary programming language. So an example of a function here from the standard template library is the sorting um, where we can sort a vector or some other different kind of containers and then we can define our own function and the way that it should sort that container. So in this case here we have a vector here that we're going to sort in an ascending or like descending order. So first of all here we have an unsorted uh, unsorted array here and then we have a vector here which just like is this array here as well. 
and then we have this sort function here which is the build in um, in the standard temporary library and then we're just called here uh, my vector which is a vector um, which is the unsorted vector of here and then we call this dot begin function here which will return um, an iterator to the start of the vector um, so this is also a built in like method or function on this container here on the vector container from the standard temporary library so these are like uh, the functions from standard temporary library libraries inside the standard temporary library's uh, sort function here and then we give it like the, the, the beginning plus the next four elements and we only want to, um, to, to sort the first four elements as we can see over here. So we have this four, uh, unsorted array here um, and then we sort the first uh, four elements here so we can see that we get these four elements here in order now. We can also define some other different kind of like um, comps up here where we can have our own function and tell it like how we want it to sort uh, this uh, type, of, uh, type of array here. It could be an ascending or descending order or we can also um, if you want to like, have strings that we want to sort, like we can define in which way it should sort, like letters and, and stuff, and, and a lot of different kind of stuff. So it really depends on what you want to sort and how you want to sort it, and then you can just define it yourself in in some function as up here, and then you can just have a return value, and that that is the way that your array will be sorted. So down here we can see that we just take the the, um, the beginning and then four elements in in front of that and then to the end of the vector here so we will sort the last four elements in this case here and we can also use another one down here where we can just go from the beginning to the end of the vector and then just sort it with my object here which is in in an, in an ascending order which is also the default one if you don't define any functions or like any uh, way it should sort your vector so if you just call sort and then my vector begin comma my vector begin end then it will as default sort in a in an ascending order and then we can just print the content down here because we have these iterators here um, that are pointing um, to all the elements in the vector here so we can see that we first of all we have an unsorted vector here and then we can sort it down here so now we get all the elements uh, sorted and now we, we have a sorted vector and we can do uh, different kind of stuff with that in, in algorithms and data structures so this is also the output that we get up here and I'll also show you this example here in code and how we can actually like do it and how it sorts the, uh, sorts the array. So we also have the STL documentation here as I already have, have, a, have a video about where we talked about the C++ documentation. And in the C++ documentation you can also like find the standard C++ library reference here um, as we can see here and then you can see like all the different kind of uh, containers and input outputs algorithms and also like just all of the different kind of uh, libraries that you can you can like imp uh, like include uh, with the standard template library here and then uh, there's uh, a good documentation for all the functions and also like all the build-in methods that you can use and all the containers and stuff like that. So first of all, I'll show you that and then we'll jump into code and you'll see some different kind of examples on how we can use the building functions from the standard template library. So we're going to jump into the C++ reference side here, um, which is the one I showed you in the slides as well. So we are in now at the standard C++ library uh, reference or like documentation here. And then, then over here to the left, we can see that we have like this C library that we can use and some different kind of containers. So if I hit this plus here, it will get like a list of, of the different kind of containers that is built in in the C++. Uh, standard template library and then we can see we have this array and, and some queues lists maps set stacks and also the vector down here and if we for example click on, on the vector here like we can see that we have these two different kind of classes and then we have these functions here which I showed you in the slides where we can have like an iterator to the beginning or an iterator to the end where we can call these functions here on the vector class so if we go into the vector class here we can also see a lot of the other different kind of like uh, member functions that we can call on our vector uh, like for example the size of our vector it will return the size of the vector and also like again the iterators up here and we can also access the individual elements in our vector and do some different kind of uh, modification with inserting or like pushback into the vector swapping elements in a vector and stuff like that so you can go check it out on here if you want to and i also have another video in the c++ documentation and how you can like go more in depth with this and how, like how the C++ documentation works. So if you're interested in that, like go check that out and, and, and learn like how to find proper documentation and how to use it in a fast way. Because like we don't need to know everything about um, C++ when we're programming C++, we just need to know like the basic stuff. And then if, we, if we're not using uh, some functions like for a long time, like we just know, need to know like where to look it up and how to find it really fast and then how to, how to implement it and in a fast and efficient way so that's really a really good um that's really good for for being like a 
uh, a programmer. So let's now turn into the bottom text here and see some different kind of examples on how we can do um, these different kind of standard library uh, building functions. So first of all, here we're just going to include the IO stream here, which is kind of like um, the, um, the, the IO stream library and like the standard library. And then we can also uh, include some other different kind of libraries as the vectors and the different kind of containers and also the alg algorithm library here. So we can use some of the sorting functions and partitioning and stuff like that. So first of all here, we just have a function here that we're going to use later on where we're just checking if a number is odd. So we're passing the, uh, the number here, i, and then we just check if it's odd. And if it's odd here, because we're taking the module, like we're taking the module like the number and then module the two. And if that is equal to one, and which means that there's a rest of one, then it's an, it's, it's an odd number. And if it's equal, like if it's an in, even number, you will return false here because this will be equal to uh, to zero if if i is an even number. So this is just a function that returns if the number that we pass it to uh, is a is an odd or even number. So we're going to use that later on. So first of all, here I'm going to show you how to sort um, sort and vector um, in the, from the STL library, as I also showed you in the slides. So first of all, here we just have an unsorted vector here that we're going to sort. And then first of all, we're just printing out um, this the unsorted uh, unsorted array. And then down here we can see that this is how we like sort the uh, the array here or like the vector in C++. So we just use this sort uh, sort function here, which is built in from the standard template library. And then we pass this back dot begin and then and back dot end, which just means that we go from the beginning of the vector and then to the end of the vector, and then we're just sorting it all. And then we print out the new uh, sorted array here after. So we can control B here and run the program. We can see that before uh, we have sorted our array, we can see that we have this unsorted array here. And then we apply this function here, sort from the beginning to the end. And then after the sorting here has been done, we can see that we now have um, a sorted array here in, in, uh, in ascending order. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 9. Where up here we had this unsorted uh, array here. So, so this like just shows you how to uh, sort an array in in, uh, in C++ with the standard template library and it's really efficient uh, because it, uh, it implements uh, the quick sort which I also talk about in the in the algorithm data structures tutorial and like how that works because that's a really efficient uh, way to sort uh, sort an, a vector. So if I just comment this out here then if we go down here we can also like uh, we can also like find the size of a vector for example if we use it in a for loop and we want to do some different kind of stuff and access in each individual element in a vector then we can also call this a size uh, of vector here which is a function from the standard type temper temporary library uh, that is built in uh, as a member function to this vector here and then we can just say like the vector dot size and then this function here will return the size of the vector so if we just see out this one to the terminal here we can see the size of this vector here is 10 and that is indeed correct because we have a, a 10 element here in our vector going from the 0th index to the 9th index. So this is like how we can find uh, the size of a vector and there's also a lot of other different kind of functions but this is just to show you like we can also use these member functions on uh, the containers in C++ from the standard chamber library. Another example here is that we can search for a value in a vector or in, in, in another container from the standard chamber library by using the binary search. Um, so first of all here we're going to have the same vector here that is unsorted uh, with these numbers here and then we're going to check um, if if an element is in the in, in the in, in the like the in the container here or like in the vector and then we just have this binary search here um, binary search uh, operator or like function here that is built into the standard template library and again we just pass the, the beginning of the vector and the end of the vector and then we need the, the first parameter here is um, the element that we want to find so in this case we want to find let us see if um, if this vector here contains element five, and if we see this out here, we can use this boolean alpha here, and it will print out either true or false if the element is found in the vector. So if I control B here, we can see that the element found is true is indeed true, because it is now found like if it just went through all all the elements here in the vector, um, and then it it was searching for the element five, and it found it here. So then it just returns that it is true and it, 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 it is contained in the vector. So if we try to like, for example, say 11 here and hit control B, it will print out false because uh, 11 is not contained in the vector up here, which is indeed correct. So this is a way like how we can, how we can check and do binary search if, if our vector or an, another container contains an element um, from the standard template library. 
Another example, and the last example here I'm going to show you is how we can partition a vector and also like how to use iterators in C++ uh, from the standard temporary library. Or first again, we're just having the same vector here and the unsorted vector here. And then we have an iterator here, which we define in this way here. So we have a vector um, iterator and then we just call it bound. So the bound here is like kind of like the bound where we want to uh, partition our, our vector at. So the first, uh, first um, like all the elements before the bound will be uh, will be the first partition and then all the elements after bound will be the second partition because now we're partitioning our vector into two. So for us first here we have this bound here which is just equal to this partition function here from the standard temporary library and again we just go from the start of the vector here to the end of the vector like we could choose an arbitrary number like we go from this from the beginning here to like uh, the beginning or like from the fourth element um, or fifth element in the vector and then to the end uh, and stuff like that but now we're just going through the whole vector here and then we're going to partition um, the odd numbers so in this case here we're using this function here odd which just returns uh, returns true or false if it's odd or if it's even then it will return false and then we just partition our array uh, so so we will get like uh, all like the even or and odd elements in in one of the partitions um, of the vector so this is done by using this partition uh, partition uh, function here that is built in into the standard temporary library. So first of all, we're going to print out uh, the odd elements here in the vector. So we just have this for loop here that has this iterator here, and then the iterator is pointing to the beginning of the vector. And then this iterator here is just running until we meet the bound, which is uh, which is where our partition stops for uh, for this case. And the bound is what we defined up here with our partitioning. So this will be the first partition of our of our original vector. And we also have the same one down here for the even elements where we just again have a vector that now starts at the bound. So it starts at the position um, of uh, like the, the zero position of the second partition of our vector. And then it just runs to the end of the vector here. So if I see out this here and run the program by hitting control B, we can see that the, all the odd elements here will be stored in the first partition. So indeed, the, uh, these are the five uh, odd elements from this uh, vector up here. And then the second partition um, from the bound here is all the even elements. So we can see that now we have like sorted our array or like partitioning, uh, partitioning uh, our array into two partitions. And in the first partition, we have all the odd numbers. And in the second partition, we have all the even numbers. So we can also like specify another function here in, the, in a way that where we want to partition. So we can just define this ourselves and do uh, whatever we, we, we want. And then we can just use this partition function here uh, to partition our vector or like a, or the container array um, the way we want it to do. So there's a lot of different kind of building functions here and also like some of them are, are pretty cool and also like very efficient and some of them you, you're going to use a lot um, later on and because they're just really useful and they just make your implementation much more, much more better and more efficient and you also need to only like if you want to sort an array you just call one line of code and then it will sort your array instead of doing all the sorting by yourself and then it won't be the most efficient and also like the best one. So in this way we've now been over like uh, some of the different kind of like standard, uh, the standard template library and some of the basic functions and, and also like how we can look up uh, the documentation for a standard template library. So you, can, you should definitely check out that uh, documentation out and, and look around for a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the different kind of like functions that is built into the standard template library. So thank you guys for watching this video and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification on the video and also like this video if you like the content and you want more in the future and it will really help out this channel and me um, in a massive way and I really appreciate your, your support. I'm currently also doing an algorithm data structure tool as I already talked about in this video so if you want to like try to implement some of these things that you learn in, in, in this tutorial here and try to, to use your C++ skills for some more practical examples. Like you can go check that video out, I'll link to it up here or else I'll just see you in the next video guys. Bye for now.